Uh, that's a requirement of the sponsors who have asked us to ensure that we can provide some evidence that this event actually happened. So over to you, Leanne, and uh, um, if you like to get cracking on. Thank you very much, Les. Welcome everybody to today's workshop. This is gonna be one of two workshops that are all along, and it's basically about how to design your website so that it's ready for the coding stage. And that comes under a term called UX and UI, which UI stands for user interface and UX stands for user experience. And these are very important roles when designing websites and they're usually assigned to the designers. Now, UX, uh, user experience, is the sort of navigational aspects of your website. How does it function? And then user interface is the overall look and feel of your website and how to make it look aesthetic and really pretty so that it draws people in. So we're gonna do a bit of wireframes today, but first of all, I'm gonna introduce myself. So my name is Leanne Daphne and I'm a digital illustrator. As Les mentioned before, I am the winner of the Kelpies Prize for 2020, 2021. <laughs> and I've been shortlisted for the Penguin Student Design Award as well this year. I've recently graduated from Gray School of Art and in my course, I did a bit of branding and web design. So I can sort of teach you guys a little bit about how to design your website so that you get the most out of it. So what we're going to cover, we're going to talk a bit about websites, how they used to look and how they look now, the types of websites you can actually design, how they connect with the apps, uh, a bit about branding. So how does your brand work with your website or if you're wanting to create something like a blog or a uh, something for a business and branding is very important. Navigation, how does your website function and how do you want people to navigate through your website? Then we're gonna go into wireframes, which is basically the skeleton of your website, how the bare bones of it work, how you want it to look. And we're gonna do a bit of a tutorial on that so you guys can join in. Just make sure you guys have a pen and paper ready for when we do the tutorial. Uh, if you would like to use your computer, if you've got drawing software, you can use that as well. Just make sure you have a, an A4 page set up ready. And then after that, once we've done the tutorial, we'll do a bit of a Q&A. So if you have any questions, write them down so we'll save them for the end. And then I'm going to give you a task for next week's to, um, session because then we're going to go into the more um, content based stuff for your website. So how did websites used to look? So if you're old enough to remember Windows 95 or any of the early websites when the internet was just starting to come into being, these are some examples of some well-known sites that you might be familiar with. So anybody who owns an Apple Mac or Microsoft device will probably recognize a couple of these websites. And I am DB, I think it is, the where you sort of look for your favorite film information. This is how they used to look probably 20, 30 years ago. Is that right, Liz? <laughs> um, <laughs> and um, as you can see, this is very basic sort of layout. It was not so much about how things looked back then. It was more about the content and what people wanted to show and it was pretty much a case of whatever we can code we'll show you what you can do and a lot of the information because we didn't have such fast computers back then had to be very minimal it was mostly text based and if you had a picture it was very pixelated so why were they sort of in this sort of format well as you sort of learn when you do a bit of coding um, you can put together a very basic website, much like this. And this is what you do and um, what you end up with usually when you haven't really designed your website and you're just kind of putting in the code to see what it, it does. You can develop menus and you can sort of change the colors around, you get the basic sort of elements in there, but it really helps to kind of think about what it is you want your website to 
contain and how you want people to see it and what kind of message you want to get across with it, especially when it comes to what is your content. So while we're going through this presentation, I want you to think about when you go into designing your website, what is it that you want to show people? What is your website about? What content would it include? So for instance, if you're setting up a business, what is your business and how do you want people to see it? And how do you make people aware that that's what the business is based on how your website looks? Now there's a huge, huge difference in the way the websites look now. They're very image based, so you have a lot of photography, illustration work, and it's more about how the website looks rather than what it contains. Why? It's because folk need to be engaged and they need to stay on the website and not wander off to another website, for instance. So these are the exact same companies as before, only 20 years later. So here we have Apple, Microsoft, and IMDB TV. Now you can see they're a lot easier to look at, um, mostly because... Could I just um, interrupt you a moment? Um, Leon, Leona's having difficulties, Dave. Uh, she can't hear anything. Um, her volume's gone, so she's going to leave and come back to see if it helps. Um, and can you check there's nobody in any waiting rooms? So, yeah, there is no waiting rooms. So that's yeah. on this part of this version. The other thing that uh, Leor, Le, Leora can do then is that she can actually dial in with a telephone to hear the audio. Right, which she was doing before, but she missed the, uh, the the visuals then. So if she stays connected to see the visuals, but dial in a second time then in order to do the audio. Okay. Okay, can you do something in the chat line then to explain to her what to do? Yeah, sure. Thanks. I'm sorry to interrupt you, Leanne. Um, just let me know where it is. Oh, yeah, she's she's done that. Looks like she's done that, Dave. No worries. So and that's good. Again. Well done, Leon, Leona. Well done. No worries. We were just about to try and give you some advice, but you've got the, done no exactly worries. the right thing. So... Sorry, Leanne, do uh, keep going. Okie dokie, I'm good to go. Already so <laughs> samples. So as we were saying, we've got examples here of current websites. So you have Apple, Microsoft, IMDB, same company. Now you can tell what, what these websites The sites are trying to portray based on that technology companies. So you can see Apple is all about IMDB TV. You have all your oh. <laughs> So what's the big difference between these websites and the websites I showed you before, the older versions? Well, they're a lot more minimal. You know the term less is more? Well, this applies to websites as well. You want to be able to structure it so it's laid out neatly, easier to see, and you don't want lots of different kinds of fonts and different kinds of images that wouldn't really normally go together on the same page. And this helps with the functionality of the website. So this is essentially what we're gonna end up doing today in the tutorial section. This is a wireframe, and it's basically a map of your website. And um, we'll go more into more of that later. But first of all, I want to show you, oops, sorry, there's my escape button there. There we go. I want to show you more of actual websites. So for instance, let's look at the BBC website. You have your main bar at the top here with the logo, 
You've got your information, all your different pages. This is what's known as your navigation bar. And it's a very important part of your website. This is where everyone comes to, to find out where all the different pages are. And you need to know what content you're going to be displaying. Now in your wireframe, you would have your navigation bar with the titles of what pages you wanted to have. And then you would design each page based on the content that it would be. So for the BBC, we know that the BBC is an information center. It gives you the news, it gives you entertainment, radio, all that kind of information. And they've structured their website based on simple buttons that you can click on with images, with the headlines and different images. And to break it up, they have these big banners going across and different headers. And it helps sort of navigate their website a lot better. All you have to do is just scroll down and you can see it says food. You know, this section's all about food, this little bar here. There's lifestyle. And then you've got the bottom bit here, which is kind of like a, a sort of index to your website. So anything that you would have been clicking on, this is something you might be interested in. And then at the very bottom, it's just like the navigation bar at the top, just in case you want to see any other important information. They have their terms of use, their cookie policy, and once again, the same sort of head as they have in the navigation bar. They put this down at the bottom here so that it's less hassle and you don't have to scroll all the way back up to the top. So it's all about how your user is going to navigate through your page. We'll take a look at a couple more. So any of you into gaming, this is the PlayStation website. Instantly you're drawn into this big slideshow that's going on. So what does this tell you as soon as you log in? Well, you've got this PlayStation logo at the top. You have your navigation bar. And this scrolls down with your page. The navigation bar is always there. This is something you can also add in when it comes to the coding. You can have your navigation bar stay where it is, or you can have it come down the page with your content. It's always nice to have it sort of come down with your content so then you don't have to keep scrolling up and down just to see the navigation. But you have your big image. This will draw folk in. It's got a few different images to slide through. And it's got a few buttons you can click as well if you want to take you to another page. And then below, it's got all the images it's, the slideshow is going through. So if you wanted to look at a specific thing, you can click on it and it will pop up here. And then if you scroll down, it's got more content. It's got a big banner. And it links all these different things together. Advertising the new console all the accessories you can get for the console. Everything has to kind of merge in a way that is, let's say, part of a family of content. So if something is related to another, it wants to kind of stay in the same place. You wouldn't put news next to your um, products, for example. If I had, say, instead of the accessories here, just news about the PlayStation 5, and then had the accessories way down the bottom, it would kind of be a bit of a, an anti-climax because it's sort of leading you into that. We kind of want that all in the same place. And what they've done here on their website is they have the console and all the accessories next to it. So you can see how that kind of works. It's kind of combining everything with its story as if you're going through it. So you have the games, other games you can play, and then back to the accessories. And then at the very bottom, they have this bit here. This is the footer. And this basically just goes over everything that was at the top, but in a more kind of uniform layout way. And this will be the same on every page that you go to on the PlayStation website. So we've looked at a couple of basic scrolling websites. 
Now let's look at something very interesting. Now this is a new form of website that is very up there with the highest <laughs> probably level of coding when it comes to websites. Um, so this is a, a, a site for a bakery. You log in, you instantly see this is for a bakery. Now, how do you build that? It's also because of the image, the dead giveaway. But if the image wasn't there, how would you still feel like this is something that is homemade? It's uh, almost got that bakery sweetness vibe to it. Well, it's basically down to the colors. It's down to the typography that they've used in the logo. It's also down to the, the way that they have the minimal aspect of it. You can tell this is a modern bakery because of the minimalist and simplistic way that they've laid out the website. But as I scroll down, notice how the images move with the scrolling. Now this is a, a technique I think is used in coding using Flash, or I can't remember exactly, but it's a, it's a new kind of way of showing your images. Now here, they will have had a giant image for their page. As you scroll, what's actually moving here is the bar, not the image. And they have another bar here, which is moving as well. So the image is actually staying still. And then they'll have some other images behind here, another bar. And basically your job to design the website is to create those images that they're gonna be scrolling. And you'll see here, they actually have a video that you can play in the center which is another way of displaying information. You don't have to have everything in text. You can also have videos. So for instance, if you are doing a blog or you're doing a gaming channel, for instance, you might wanna have some of your videos that you've done. Or if you're creating animation, you can have some animated GIFs that run across your page. The sky is the limit. You can pretty much do anything you your heart desires, as long as it makes sense as you're scrolling down the page. If you were to have things all over the place, it would not be easy to navigate. If you look at this website, it's nice and clear, it's precise, it doesn't have any more than it needs to. If it wants more, you can click on the images, you can go to the navigation bar, and you can try other pages. So I want to know a bit about the website. So if I press the about page, it takes you to this page. Now you see this is different layout to the home page. We've got two images on the side here. Other badges. We've got and it's following this nice sort of grid system. And when you're doing your wireframes, a grid system is always a good thing to think about. Everything needs to line up so that it's nice and concise. And it's always good to three You're breaking up a bit, Leanne. It might be worth switching your camera off. I should perhaps explain that Leanne's just moved into a new flat and the internet has not been working very well. So she's, uh, we've, we've supplied her with On a one side or a big image. 
Uh, a massive image that covers up two columns. Just lost or you could just have one image. Leanne, we've just lost the last uh, minute's oh, worth of the, the Wi-Fi oh. issues to help with the audio. A few websites and types. Oh. Oh, can you still hear me now? We can hear you now, Leanne. Uh, that's much clearer. And uh, we we got a, a, the first bit of you talking about okay. this page and talking about uh, a grid style, uh, but then it sort of all froze. Okay, I'll go over that bit again. So you have the rule of three when it comes to working with your websites. And this is also um, used in things like photography and filmmaking. Imagine your screen split up into three blocks like this. And each one of those columns is a different size, but they all are nice and uniform. So you can either take over two columns and have one space for text you could have all three columns take over space kind of like they've done here with the the banner that goes across or you can have it where it's two different columns and then you have two images but that could also be one massive image if they wanted so it's really it's a nice sort of grid system that you can work to that helps you simplify the the way that the page would look and it's good when you're thinking of your wireframes to think of that rule of three now you can have as many columns as you want but it all has to line up otherwise it can become confusing and hard to navigate through the page so now that we've had a look at some website examples I'm going to talk to you a bit about how your website might want to link to other platforms such as social media links and how you can carry across the branding into different websites. So, for example, I'm going to have a look at my website. So, for my website, it's all about artwork and I want people to know that as soon as they come into the page. Now, this is my welcome page. It's very simple. It's just a nice sort of poster style image that I have that covers the whole page. And I have my name up here. I've got social media links. And then I have a button that takes you to the main website. So this is something that you might want to do if you're wanting to promote your artwork in a website. Or, or a hobby that you have, you could have a welcome page. Now, these are always good to just sort of really draw the user into your space. And then it takes you to the main website. So if I go into the main website, it takes you instantly to my portfolio. So these are all my artworks. Now you can click on each of these and it will take you to a specific dedicated page for each of the images or the projects. At the top here, I have my navigation bar. Now on one side, I've got my navigation bar for the rest of the website. And on the other side is a navigation bar for my external websites. Now these are my social media links. Now, if you, for instance, have Facebook or Instagram, or say you're an artist like me, and you want to display your work in a portfolio site like Behance or ArtStation, then these are always good to have your links on the website too. At the bottom, when I click on any of my images, for instance, this one, you'll see that the backdrop also is an image itself as well. I have a starry background and that's to be able to link all the pages together into one brand. So, for me, my brand is artwork and they all have the same kind of feel and vibe to them. What do they all have in common? Well, it's all about the imagination. It's all around because of creativity. So I chose to go with a starry background because your imagination is the universe. So 
uh, I use that as my brand for the website. And I carry this through into a lot of different things. Now, if I was to go back to the main page and I go to my contact page, I have my image there again. Now I use this image through all my different platforms and this is a way to link everything together. So if I went from this page to my We've lost you again, Leanne. Um. We've lost you again, Leanne. Can you hear us, Leanne? This is an banner in. Uh, we lost you there, Leanne, from the moment you went to this page virtually. Image is actually the same image. Hello. Hello. We, we yeah we can hear you again now. We lost you on that contact page. We really got nothing much on that page. Right. Um. So on the contact page, I had my original sort of image, yeah. and let me see this. Okay, when it pops up. There we go. So I click on my Behance link. Now this is one of the social media icons. And this links to my website in the fact that I have the same image at the top here on my banner. So when you're doing external pages, you got to think about your branding. Now, if you're doing a blog, say it's a nature blog, then you want to make sure that that theme of nature carries across into any external websites that you want to connect with. So for instance, if you have a social media page like Instagram, for instance, now this is my Instagram from my website, um, you want it to carry across the same vibe, the same feel on each of these different platforms. So if we were going for a nature blog we want nature themed images we'd want something that would link each one to it now we can also create a logo now a logo is very important because then that brings everything in for instance if we look at the playstation website and we go up to the top the logo links everything together we have the logo in the corner We've got the logo on the console. We have it on each of the games, and then you scroll down, it's here again. We have it here on the title for PlayStation Plus. It constantly going through the website, so you're constantly exposed to the brand. If it's a theme, if the brand is a theme, then we want to see that throughout the whole of the website. So now that we've got the sort of idea of how a website should be structured, what kind of branding you need to include in your website, we'll have a look at the navigational aspects of it. So for this, I'm just going to use the PlayStation website as an example. Up here, you have your navigation bar. Now this 
is what we always start with when we do the coding part of your website. What is it that you want to display? What is going to grab the attention of your user? Well, first of all, in terms of PlayStation, it's all about games. PlayStation is about gaming. So what is the first thing they're going to put? Games. You can have drop down menus, which then take you to all the different elements. Now, if it's for your own website, say we're going with the nature blog, it could be our first part is about our adventures, our nature adventures. Maybe you might have a drop down menu that takes you to different locations that you've been to. For their next one, it's hardware. They also create consoles. So they have another drop down menu that takes you to a different thing. Now you can customize this depending on your topic. We usually have in websites an about section. This is so that you can kind of find out more about the content. Now in this website, it tells you a little bit about who the creators of the bakery are. It shows you a few images and a little bit of a description but it still keeps you engaged in the content because of how the images are displayed. You can have a shop, for instance, if you have a little business and you want to sell things, then you can have a little shop section. Sometimes you can create this within your website and other times you can create it as an external piece that you just link your uh, page to. And then you have a contact page. If you are a business, you might want people to email you for commission or for advice. So you can have a wee contact page as well. Now, each one of these will be laid out differently. So if I click on wholesale, for example, it's much different to how the other pages look, but it's still keeping the same kind of branding going through it the same kind of shapes and colors and content. You have all the images of the products that they make. And it's just the same at the bottom here as well. So we want to make sure that it all fits together, it all kind of has a nice marriage of images and shapes and colors. So when I, when I say create a website, we want to almost paint a canvas of colors that link together. We want to pick a nice brand. We want to pick a nice color palette. We want to structure it in a way that is simple yet effective. So, how well frames So, uh, thank you. We've lost you again, Leanne. Get back. We've lost you uh, from when you you started uh, talking about the uh, colors and consistency of the coloring across the whole uh, um, website. Let's... Okay, we still lost you, Leanne. Let's go back to our wife. Okay, Leanne, we, we've lost, we lost that last bit. And we'll put this to full. I think it's stuck. You're breaking up bad, Which part? Leanne. Okay, I will um, 
what I'll do is I'll stop sharing and then reshare again, see if that helps. And I think sometimes is that better? Can you hear me okay? Yeah, we can hear you fine now. Um, Dave is more expert on this than me, but uh, it may be if you're moving too fast around the websites because you've got so much on there. I don't know if that's interfering with things or what, but we are, mm -hmm. you did break up quite badly on that last section. Okay, uh, so this next section, we're just going to be doing um, stuff that isn't involving the websites online, so it shouldn't break up so easily. Um, so what I was saying before is when you create a website, you want to have it with a nice kind of color palette, a nice brand feel to it, um, a three structure column layout, and this here is an example of what we're going to do in the tutorial section. So this is a wireframe. As you can see, it's very simple. It's your bare bones of your website. And if you have a pen and paper ready, or you have a screen with your drawing software ready, we're going to do a bit of a sort of let's say 10 minutes and we're just gonna jot down some really simple ideas as fast as we can we don't want them to be too complex but this will give you an idea now before we start a couple of things um i'm gonna explain a little bit about what each of these shapes mean so what i'm gonna do is if you have um medibang or you're using a piece of pen and paper, then you need to set up a page, just a blank page, and select a really simple brush like this. Um, hold on, Let's see if I can get it to work. Make sure you select color. Um, so we'll select color black and select a brush about that sort of thickness. Okay. If you're using a pen and paper, we're just gonna do this. So one way to do, split your page up into a few sections. We'll do six sections like this. Okay, so that's six different pages. Now this top one, that's gonna be your home page. Now your home page is your main page. That's the one that goes straight into your website as soon as you click on the link. That's the first thing that people are gonna see. The second one is gonna be your about page. This page is gonna be all about you, the creator of the website, the one that's got the business or the one that's creating the blog. When people visit a website, it's like telling a story. You want to know about who the website is about, what the website's about. Now, it doesn't have to be about you per se, it can be about just the hobby in general and how it got started. But it's always good to have an about page. The next one, can be entirely up to you. I'm just going to put content. So say for instance, you have videos of your adventures or your gaming channel or your little business, then this is where you put your, your content, uh, your products, anything you want. The next three pages, entirely up to you, what you would like to put in those columns. So I'm gonna do maybe another content page for different things. I might have a shop and I'll have a contact page as well. Okay, now what we're gonna do is within these pages, we're just gonna do 
some rectangles. This is going to be your page. It doesn't have to be neat, it can be as rough as you want. We're just selecting ideas for our website. And we'll draw them in. And you can do as many different versions of these as you want. As long as you have a decent number of pages. And what this will do is this will help you when it comes to coding your website. Now you can either code it yourself or you can get someone else to code it. But in order for them to create your website, they need to know what it is they're going to be doing visually. So what do we have here? So we're going to have, I'm going to zoom in onto this first home page here so you can see it. So we're going to have a header. This doesn't have to be neat. This is just going to be rough. So this is your header. Now I'm just putting head, the word header here, but you can put in any kind of title you want. This is what your website is going to be about. So in my case, this is going to be my welcome page. Okay, this helps you kind of put together a title. At the bottom, we'll have a footer. This is the bit at the bottom where you might have some elements like um, help or about, just little things that people might want to quickly go to, um, or it could be terms and conditions, sometimes you find them there. It's entirely up to you what you want in the bottom there. So once you have those two, though, the main things that you have, it's entirely up to you how you structure it. So remember I said about the rule of three, you, what you want to do is you might want to have a big image at the top. Now, whenever it's a photo or an image in your wireframes, you always do an X. And that means that's an image. OK. I might want a few buttons underneath that take me to different pages or different articles. And these are going to have pictures on them. And then if I was going to do a header for the pictures, we're just going to do a straight line. That's your headers. And if, say, for instance, we wanted some text underneath the headers, you just do a squiggly line. OK. If you wanted icons for your social media links, well, you can put them as circles. These are just. going to be your icons. As your notes, it be Instagram. Um, let's make this a banner of a new artwork or something. Do we want this to be a slideshow? We can also put that in there, slideshow. How many images is the slideshow going to have? Well, let's say maybe three images. And what this does is it helps you to kind of know how since I have so much content in my wireframe that tells me I need three images that are in landscape format. I need two images here for well, I need articles I need to go then collect those images. So I need to maybe take photos or I need to take screenshots of what I've got so that then I can use it in my website. Um, and this will help you for your next task for next week. Now at the bottom here, I might want a video. 
Now for video content, it's just the same as doing a rectangle, but instead of putting a cross, you just put these little lines here and it makes it look like a film reel. Basically, that means that's a video. So that's your home page. That's what you want people to see. And you can start to see it come together. These are really rough and you can play around with them as much as you want. So then we move on to our about page and we just do the same thing. It doesn't have to be the same layout as this. It can be any way you want, play around with it. I might want a video at the top here, just explaining a little bit about me and what I do. So we'll put a video. We might want title headers with just about here. What if you want to put it in a different position? Well, we can do that. We can even just undo that and put about in the middle. Maybe I might want it in the center here. So what if you want a drop down menu as well? I need to cover that. So you can either just have it in the bottom here, have your pages, you got home, about, um, what else did we do, content, and you can just sort of layer them in there. You can either have it along the way like this, or you can have it say on this page, I want the menu to be on the side and you just have menu written there so you know where that's going to be and that'll help you to kind of know where you're going to put everything when it comes to the coding so for next week i want you to have an idea of what it is you want to put in your website i want you to have your wireframes decided on and what we're going to do next week is then I'm going to show you how to put the content in your website in a way that all you have to do is put the images where you want them. So we'll size an image for a website. We will be showing you how to do buttons and all the images that you need for when it comes to coding so that all you have to do is just Put them in a file and they're already there to be used so this week is really just about how to structure your website if there's any questions feel free to let me know and i'll do my best to, to help i don't I, th I think we'd better not dare ask you to switch your camera on again uh, Leah. So uh, if people want to drop their questions into the chat line, uh, that's probably the easiest way to ask them. Uh, let me just start while people are thinking about it. So I'm, I'm getting from that, Leanne, sort of various icons are the ways that you sort of put, put you know, the, the putting the uh, cross through means a picture and putting the little lines down the side means a video. Um, that's really sort of helpful way of thinking about it um, and laying it out. Uh, now we're waiting for questions or is everybody gone to sleep? I think I, I was yawning there, Leanne, but I, only because I'm very tired. I was up late last night, so uh, apologies about that. Um, seeing as I'm the only person I think whose face is on this at the moment. Uh, certainly was not for lack of interest. This is fascinating. Hmm. It's making me think about redoing the club's website. <laughs> OK, Harvey, you're busy uh, doing a website, I believe. Have you got some ideas from what you've been seeing here? And the, you, are you, is it going to change a little bit about how you've been thinking about it? Um, anyway, yeah, you... my website actually includes a lot of the things we've been talking about, but um, it's good just to see all of the wireframes and how to set it all out. I think it looks very mm -hmm. good. 
Great. You can have it any you want in any order. It's entirely up to you. And uh, sometimes it's fold your paper into sharing so Oh, uh, we've lost you again, Leanne. We lost you at the you can fold your paper into. And when we get you back, we'll have to ask you to explain the game from there. Oh, right. Can you hear me now? <laughs> yep. Okay, so a good thing to do is to fold your paper into six and for each one of the pages do six different ideas and pick the one that you like the best. Just make a wee star on areas that you like. If you, for instance, say you like the way you did a certain column, um, but you don't like the rest of the page, you can always do a new uh, wireframe with the bits that you do like and just try and get the layout that works for you. Mm -hmm. Think as well about the content and how you're going to let people's eye flow through your page. It wants to be nice and easy to read. Everything needs to kind of bunch together in relatable uh, subjects so that it's not all over the place. Yeah, uh, the uh, other thing I'd like to say on behalf of customers is that the more you can think about it from the point of view of your customers, if it's a commercial website, the better. So the easier it is for them to find what they're looking for when they come to your site, particularly if it's a product, or I think in your case, it's going to be a booking site, isn't it, uh, Harvey? Um, you want to make that as simple as possible for the customer and try and think about it from their point of view and even trial it a bit with customers, people who might book or um want to use the site themselves so uh, yeah anything you I actually put the, the link to the still in development but i put the link to the site in the chat yeah that'll be very good for when you want to go more in depth with the wireframe it's always good to do a rough version first though because it gets those ideas out and you're not messing around with lining it up so it's pixel perfect you just want to get the navigational aspects and the experience down first um once you're happy with your website and the way it looks in the wireframe then i recommend going on to one of these sites where you can make it nice and neat and you know whether you're gonna sit and line it up so it's nice and um aligned yeah uh, i'm actually using wordpress do you do the website on yep which you know um, is you use... a way of making it a little while yep, ago i went use... you go first i'll, I'll let you go first <laughs> okay it's a little while ago i um i met up with dave and we worked on creating a website using wordpress to make it a bit easier to to use yep it's um it's good to go in and use this software but in this instance we are working on the user experience and the user interface which yeah. is more about the way the website looks um and how it functions and that's the points that we want to get across, not so much how it's um, how pixel perfect it is right now. We're just kind of working on if this is going to be our website, how is it going to make this easier for people to use? And we want to be able to play with the ideas, move them around, try different things until we settled on an idea that is concrete and we think that would work best. So we're going with the rough ideas at the moment. Would you usually do that, Leanne, sort of like using Photoshop or Medibang or something like that, and then show show that to people? How do you normally do that? <clears throat> so yeah, I would, I mean, it's just as simple doing it on a piece of paper with a pen, um, <coughs> but uh, 
you can do it on Photoshop from Eddie Bang. Um, it's really just getting the idea down and you don't really want to do something too finished to start with because you're going to have to change things around um, and you don't really want to kind of back yourself into a corner with an idea mm. where you can't make adjustments. So it's always good to get the roughs and say, right, this is how I'm thinking. Someone might turn around and go, that's not going to work. We might need to change that round. Um, so you might have to draw the page out again, but it's just as easy just to do a quick rough and go, okay, how about this? How about this? And, and then just change it around. Um, you can you can do it with Photoshop and sort of do like a grid system, line it up so it's all nice and neat. But that is only when you've got the the absolute yes, this is how the website should function um, down. It's it's kind of like doing a good version of a rough when you go onto the computer. <laughs> All right. Uh, Dave has asked, have you tried using a dedicated wireframe tool in the past? Now, is there such a thing? You can. There is a program, uh, program uh, an Adobe program, and I can't remember. It's quite a new one, and it's all about user experience. and. Um, it's quite good for, say you were designing a website that was also going to be on mobile phones and it was going to be on tablets and you can kind of uh, make it so it adjusts to the different screen sizes and it's and links all the pages together. I can't remember what it's called though, that's the only thing. Um, okay. Well, we're going to smooth Normally I haven't used those kind of websites in the... <laughs> yeah, so... <laughs> so... Um... Anybody else got any questions or and can we just recap over what you're expecting us all to come to next week's meeting with uh, so that I can ensure that uh, I remind everybody of that next week. So I my understanding. Okay, so yeah, off you go. So for next week's task, you have a week to do this. I want you to all have your wireframes ready. So they should be all finished with the pages, the text that you want to put in your website and any images that you want to put in your website. Now, don't edit the images yet. And I'm going to give you a link to um, a royalty free image site so that you can also, if you don't have the capabilities of taking pictures that you want and you can actually get uh, royalty free images from a site called Pexels. Um, and this will allow you to use that in your website as well. If you're wanting a nice background or something that relates to your subject, I'll put a wee link in the chat so you guys can have a look at that. Yeah, I think Harvey and I know Pexels from doing uh, film work because it's a really nice uh, website for that sort of thing. Yeah. So we're going to use those and then next week I'm going to talk to you about how you size your images for websites, how to create buttons um, so that they're ready for when you do the coding part and all you have to do you select the image and it's read already there for you and what we'll do is we should be able to kind of make a a template website so it's not actually the website but it's almost a picture of it so it's all laid out how it's supposed to look and when you go to the coding it should match your template and our template, how are we going to make it, Leanne? Is that going to be online using something or is it going to be, uh, do you want us uh, basically to have more paper, sheets of paper around? Well, the actual template we're going to use Medibang, I think would be the easy option. Okay. 
Okay, uh, Leona, do you know Medibang at all? If you don't and you have another paint package that you use, I'm sure that would be a very suitable alternative. Yep, any any kind of paint drawing software will work as long as you can import images. That's all you need. Procreate. Procreate will work. Yeah, yeah. you can use Procreate if you want. Yeah. Okay. Jamie, you and I, the the least digitally, technically, artistically abled, I suspect. Oh, no, Dave might be in there as well. Um, I, I'm not sure, Jamie, have you looked at Medibang at all or paint software? Uh, I haven't, no, but I'm sure I'll find something. Oh, I'm sure you will. Knowing your ta many talents, I feel sure you'll find something by this time next week. Um, Medibang is good, but a bit more complicated than some of the other paint software. Um, okay. And uh, Photoshop Just any kind of software. It's fiendishly difficult to get into, so I wouldn't recommend going to Photoshop unless you've uh, had a bit of uh, experience using it. Mm -hmm. And any kind of software that allows you to resize a picture is probably the the best right. uh, form. Because uh, that's what we're going to be doing is resizing images so that they're the exact size you need them to be. So could we do it on things like um, uh, like a Google Jamboard? Um, you, you might be able to. The only problem is it won't be. Uh, actually resizing the file so it needs to be the file that is resized right when you put it into a um because when you do the coding part you'll be working in pixels right. so you need to know what size the pixels of your images are ah. so that it all fits on your page okay i see mm -hmm. Uh, we need we need our pixels. Okay, fair enough. All right. Any other okay. questions? Otherwise, we'll call it a day. Um, I've got a lot to think about with our website, and it's certainly very helpful. And it's made me think about uh, having uh, more consistency across the pages as well. Uh, and exactly how we handle the branding of our youth club as a separate sort of entity within it. So it's been very useful. Thank you. You're welcome. Hope you guys have enjoyed tonight's session and look forward to the next one. And uh, if you need any help, just feel free to email me or you need anything, just uh, feel free to ask. Right, so do you want to drop your email in the chat line, uh, Leanne? And then if anybody's got any questions, they can always send you an email. Yep, yeah, I'm just put that in for you. So you can email me at this address. If you have any, if you're stuck on anything in regards to the wireframes or you're having trouble getting content for the website, I can give you a hand. Great. Okay. Well, thank you very much indeed, Leanne. And uh, we'll see you. Uh, um, yeah, Leona, if you don't have a specific idea, yes, come up with, uh, imagine you've got a client. Um, get one of your parents or somebody to be a client uh, and, uh, and get them to say what they want in their website. Okay, so imagine you're going to you've got you've got a client, you're a, you're a graphic designer. They've approached you and they've said, "We want to have a website about this, and we want uh, perhaps a little commercial one. That's always a good one to have a go at." Um, you know, thinking about products and a shop and uh, where that type of thing will is quite a good one to have a little go at. So think about 
something that maybe um, you would make uh, and you would like to sell um, or treat it as a here's my uh, custom here's my client who wants me to design their website so uh, you could do it either way okay same thing to see can't wait to see you <laughs> sorry leanne i'm saying uh, it'll be really exciting to see your ideas and i can't wait to see what you come up with you can go we lost the last line We heard that you'd be happy, I, excited to see what our ideas are like, and then we lost it. Something absolutely outrageous for your website could be a, a dinosaur website, or yeah, have fun with it and how you'd like. Okay, thank you very much, Leanne, and I'm going to. Uh, uh suggest everybody um you know if you've got anything else drop it in the drop chat box otherwise i'm going to close the meeting and say good night see you next week see you next week everybody Okay, Leanne, that was uh, went well, I think. It's a shame yeah. about the, uh, you know, the constant interruptions. That's the only problem. Uh, I'm sorry about that, but we kept losing you. So let's hope that's all fixed for next week. Yeah, it should be, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I wasn't sure because sometimes it was um, working fine, then it froze for a minute, and I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the problem you've got is you, you don't know it's happened, do you? <laughs> and uh, no, because <laughs> no, you would gaily carry on and, and we'd be ge getting the odd bong, little bongs and things. <laughs> we'd get the odd word. <laughs> it was quite amusing. <laughs> but anyway, uh, let's hope it's all sorted out for next week. OK, good. Uh, that was quite it... interesting. Uh, no. I've fascinated with that i'm sorry i was yawning it was only just i'm very tired we had such a chaotic time on monday as you know um so uh i'm oh, still recovering from that <laughs> uh, i'm sorry that you didn't have all the people you should have had coming to you but uh oh well these things happen well, it was it turned out okay the kids had fun i think when i'm up in person next week it'll be easier and um, i might get them to just sort of read it again um and just kind of um use the what they created this week as a as a guide so they can kind of all have a piece of the the image each yeah to do um that will be good um, and then that <laughs> No, they really enjoyed it. I mean, they came bouncing up to me afterwards. A couple of the girls, uh, I don't know whether they were on your on your bit or not, but a couple of the girls came bouncing up. We had such fun. So uh, whatever happened, <laughs> they enjoyed it. <laughs> Is all I can say. Well, uh, I don't know if you've seen my like... Facebook page. Or you've seen the club's Facebook page, but I I did comment on the fact it was utter chaos and that. Uh, uh, I was sorry about that, uh, but the, at the end of the day, everybody seemed to enjoy it. Um, uh, so, yeah. And there's some nice I mean, feedback on that. Really? Mm. So, so it, it's, uh, it, it's, we're still bedding down. These numbers are just bizarre. You know, we've gone from 15 to 50 about. And uh, mm. so it's been a bit difficult coping with that big expansion in a smaller hall. So, so uh, but anyway, uh, whatever we're doing, the kids are loving it. So that's good, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, Any uh, news yeah. from the publishers or are they uh, still 
uh, thinking about things? I I think they're still thinking about things. That I believe the lady who I emailed is on holiday for two weeks, so we probably won't hear anything uh, probably until end of the month, I think. Okay, yeah. Um, that sounds about half the course on these. So... <laughs> Yeah, I'm getting so worked um, up and thinking. So, oh, yeah, we're getting into the publisher. The publisher going, oh, 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 oh yeah, another one to read. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know. But I should. I'm supposed to have a meeting with them, and I think it's the twin around the twentieth, anyway. So oh. I shall ask and see how they're going on with it. Yeah. Um. And uh, see what's happening. Yeah, that's that sounds good. That sounds good. I'm I'm going to be, you know, really surprised if they don't go for it, I must admit. And I think if they don't, we should go somewhere else and just try some other publishers. Um, yeah. Because I, I do think your illustrations are just stunning. Uh, and I think we have got a good little story there. So, uh, um, which is, mm -hmm. so anyway, we may just be kidding ourselves and they're going, oh, this is so different and we don't like it and it's you know you never know people's tastes are different so um, we'll see how it goes fingers yeah. crossed yeah <laughs> absolutely <laughs> anyway it's great to talk to you and thank you very much and uh well we'll stagger onwards towards next monday <laughs> and just let me know when I'll you're you. being picked up and all that sort of stuff what the time scales are of your when you've booked your uh, I'll try and get early. yeah just let us know just let us know and, uh, that'll be fine okay see Alrighty. well have a, lovely, have a lovely weekend and i'll see you on monday <laughs> indeed see you then bye see you then bye